So Abby will introduce David for us. Hi guys, so um, David Calkins, he was, um, he's an ELS alum. He was the fundraising chair when he was here. He is now the emergency coordinator for Henrico Health District at the Virginia Department of Health, and he is also he's taken on a role as the interim Central Region Emergency Coordinator. Correct? That's correct. All right. Yeah. All right. Thank, you. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, thank you for inviting me. I'm really happy to be here. As Abigail mentioned, I am an alumnus of, of this program. I graduated in 2010, and I was a member of this fraternity. And I would just like to say I am amazed at this turnout. But well done, guys. <laughs> this is incredible. When I was here, we had uh, four or five people showing up regularly for our meetings. So um, thank you, for again, for having me. Um, I have about 20 minutes to speak. And I am recording this presentation because I'm working on my master's degree. And I need to demonstrate some public speaking skills. So is that OK with everybody? Excellent. All right, especially important for that is the question and answer session. So I hope that you guys will have some questions for me at the end. OK, um, I'm the emergency coordinator, as Abigail mentioned, for Henrico Health District. That means I'm a state employee, so I work for the Virginia Department of Health. But I work at the local level. Um, so there are a lot of interesting um, state and federal and local government dynamics that go on. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is uh, I'll introduce myself briefly, and then I'll describe my current position, and I'll talk about my experience in Eta Lambda Sigma, and then I'm going to make some recommendations for success. I hope you'll forgive me for being um, presumptuous about it, but I did learn a lot during my time here, and I've learned a lot since I graduated, and there were some things that I wish I had known when I was a student here, and I would really like to pass that along to you. And I would just like to say that I wake up every day excited to go to work. I wake up every day passionate about what I do, and I know that I'm really lucky. A lot of people don't have that. So I'm hoping that what I can pass along to you today will help you have similar success. And then as I mentioned, uh, we'll have questions and answers. All right, so I have seven years of experience in emergency management. And before I get too far into it, I want to ask you guys, um, just survey the room. How many people here are interested in a homeland security career, like law enforcement, CIA? That, oh, oh no, all right. That's almost every hand came up. Who's here, who here is interested in the emergency management side of it? Thank you. Okay, okay so, all right, some people raise hands for both, that's cool. Um, so I have seven years of experience in emergency management, and when I was a student here, like you, I thought I was going to be you know, CIA doing intelligence work, um, CBP, maybe an air marshal or something like that. But an opportunity presented itself in emergency management, and I'm really glad that I took it. Um, I have a couple of certifications. I have a FEMA professional development series. Does anybody have that? No? OK, that's actually, I'm sorry? We have the FEMA IM courses, that's about it. OK, right, so you can get your PDS just by completing um, those IS courses. So if you look up FEMA professional development series, you could probably do that before you graduate. And I'm also a certified professional continuity practitioner. My first two years at VDEM at the Virginia Department of Emergency Management, I was the continuity planning specialist for the Commonwealth. So I'm working on some current goals. Um, I'm working on my master's degree at Virginia Tech. That's the um, satellite campus that they have here um, in Henrico County. I'm working on my professional emergency manager certification and my certified emergency manager certification. So another quick show of hands. Um, how many people here are Homeland Security and Emergency Preparedness majors? Is there anybody here who's not? All right, what are some of the other majors? Okay. Psychology, all right, any others? Political science. Political science? Okay, great, I mean, this is a field where you can have different areas of expertise um, and come together and, and perform a lot of different capabilities and functions. So just a little bit about myself, I'm married, I've been married for almost three years. This is my bride, Ashley, um, she's an attorney and an amateur photographer. I'm also a pet father, I have a dog, and five cats, all of whom are um, rescues. My wife does a lot of work with Richmond Animal Care and Control. And I tell you this because it's important to remember to have a, a good work-life balance. I was in an interview panel last year, and one of the candidates came in, and he said, my name is so-and-so, I'm a husband, I'm happily married, and I have three children, and I believe in a work-life balance. And the way that he introduced himself with that confidence has always just stuck with me, so I try to emulate that. And I'm also an emergency management professional. So those are the three kind of spheres that I really um, look at my life. I have just a couple of pictures here. This one is from the National Hurricane Center. Uh, as a 
an employee of the Virginia Department of Emergency Management, I took a week-long course in Miami to, under, to better understand hurricanes and hurricane planning. And that's Rick Nab all the way on the right. He was the former director of the National Hurricane Center. So I wanted to talk to you about my leadership journey. That's actually an important narrative in my uh, master's program, but it's something that I try to keep in mind. I always try to grow uh, and to learn and to make sure my career is following some kind of trajectory. And it all started with realizing that I'm not a good listener. I'm a terrible listener. And that was something that played out in my personal life, in my marriage, and in my professional life as a supervisor. So I had a person um, that worked for me that would come in and speak to me for 10, 15 minutes at a time and bury the, bury the lead, right? So she would be 10 minutes into this conversation and she would tell me, I need you to be at a meeting at such and such time. And I would just totally miss it because my mind wandered off. So I realized I needed to become a better listener. And from there, I realized I needed to become a better communicator, a better speaker and a better public speaker. And I needed to be a better leader and I needed to better understand the ethical implications of emergency preparedness and response. And so just by picking one thing that I wanted to improve, I was able to find other things that helped me grow as a leader. So how many people here think they're a good listener? <laughs> but listening is hard, right? And especially as we use technology more often, uh, we become a little less connected. It can be hard to really pay attention and to really hear people, make them feel heard, and to connect with another person. But in this field, in emergency management, and I can't speak to Homeland Security, but in emergency management specifically, <coughs> nothing is more important than people. Nothing works without relationships. And if you take away anything from today, remember that. Everything is, is centered around relationships. And you build those relationships by connecting with people, having emotional intelligence. Are you guys familiar with emotional intelligence? No? Well, it's basically understanding how you receive information and how you interpret it, especially criticism, and how, you, how that affects the way that you communicate with people. So soft skills like that are much more important than the technical skills that you're learning right now. You might know everything about ICS. You might know everything about the planning team. But if you don't know how to talk to people and connect with them, you're not going to be an effective leader. So a couple of things that I've learned about myself, I'm very skilled as a media facilitator because of these skills that I've developed over the past few years. I also need to improve uh, my time management and responsiveness. And that's yet another dynamic that plays out both professionally and personally. Is this helpful? Yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure you guys are yeah, you're picking up what I'm putting down. This is all this work. Okay, so we're going to switch gears now, and I'll tell you a little bit about public health emergency preparedness and response. That's quite a mouthful, but as a, um, a member of the Virginia Department of Health, I'm responsible for implementing federal capabilities and guidelines from the CDC at the local level. So I manage the Medical Reserve Corps. Um, the person who is the coordinator is a member of my team. I don't like to use the word employee or staff, uh, so I always try to say colleague or a teammate. I respond to incidents, so things like weather, um, hazardous weather like snow, hurricanes that are coming in. All of those things have a public health bent because hospitals might be affected, and usually that's the first thing to happen. And Abigail, you can probably attest to this as well in the Crater Health District. Hospitals, if their generators go down, we're in trouble. That directly affects patient care, and that requires regional cooperation. And <clears throat> Abigail mentioned that I'm, I'm the acting central region coordinator. So regionalization, that's really the wave of the future. That's how we're gonna get things done. And that goes back to building relationships, right? So you can't always get money from one locality. All right, so you, you get different localities band together in a region and apply for grants and share resources and share expertise. I'm also involved in incident, I mean, event planning. Um, training and exercises, and those two kind of go together because we try to exercise our emergency operations plan um, doing real world things, like right here, and I probably can't see this picture very well. But this is at Essex Village in Henrico County, Eastern Henrico County. Um, it's Section 8 housing, so low income housing. We went out there and provided flu vaccinations free of charge going door to door. So that's exercise, exercising our capability during a major public health emergency, like a pandemic or H1N1. Uh, to vaccinate the public, people who don't have access to health care. We can actually go to their homes, knock on their doors, ask them if they need a flu shot. If they do, we can give it to them right there on the spot. And that's a really important capability to exercise. I also work on um, developing emergency plans uh, locally and um, as part of a region, as part of the central region in Virginia. 
And I also have a leadership role, as I mentioned. I supervise the person who coordinates um, our medical reserve corps activities. Are you guys familiar with the medical reserve corps? Yeah, any volunteers? Okay. Which um, district are you guys in? I'm part of the South Central uh, mm -hmm. of Richmond. Uh, we had, um, what was it, Kate Kevin, Kate. Oh, Kate Bosman. Yes, we had Kate Bosman come and speak to us. Great, so this is another picture from um, our event in Essex Village. We actually did this, this is from 2017. We did it again this year. I had a lower turnout, but that's okay. We partnered with police. Um, they provided external security for us. So anytime we're out there, uh, vaccinating the public, or if we open a pod, a point of dispensing, where we have to distribute medical countermeasures. Like let's say there's an anthrax attack. We're going to open up these pods and distribute um, Cipro and Doxy to the public. So this is an exercise of that. The lady in the white shirt is one of our Medical Reserve Corps volunteers, and the police officer, like I said, provides security for our team. Uh, this picture is from um, a Fight the Bite event that we held in 2016 for Zika prevention. We opened a pod in Eastern Henrico and dispensed um, mosquito repellent. So, you know, we wouldn't really do that any other time except for something like this where we're trying to educate the public, but it did exercise our ability to hand out medical countermeasures like Cipro and Doxy in the event of an anthrax event. All right, switching gears. This might be much more interesting. I don't know, we'll see. I did bring some props. Um, I don't know why, but I was just digging through my things and I found a couple of things that I wanted to bring and show you guys. Oh, thank you. So happy old fitters right here. Um, I was fundraising committee chairman in this fraternity from 2007 to about 2008, 2009 or so. I never ran for executive council. That's something that I wish I had done. And I understand that you guys are making your speeches tonight. You're making your case for being voted onto the council. So good luck to everybody. I organized some fundraising events. Do we have a fundraising committee chairperson here? Oh, that's, that's right. Okay. <laughs> so um, I organized a walkathon to fund a trip to New Orleans to attend the National Evacuation Conference. And this was just shortly, not really shortly, but this was much closer to Katrina um, than we are now. So there were still a lot of lessons learned coming out of New Orleans. We wanted to send a couple of people there to, to learn. So uh, we held a walkathon, and we also worked with RMC. Do you work with them still? No. Okay. Do you see those people with yellow jackets when you go to a concert or a sports venue? You can work for them and you're essentially volunteering but you're getting paid and it's a way to raise funds. So we attended the National Evacuation Conference in 2010. I went with Andre Marcoach. She was another member of the fraternity and we presented on uh, social and cultural barriers to preparing and disseminating emergency preparedness information. I feel like I say the word preparedness a lot. <laughs> So this is from the walkathon. This was at Bird Park. Um, I don't remember exactly when this was, probably 2009 or so. And these are a lot of our members. So anybody here familiar with the history of this organization know who was in this picture? Thomas Colbeck. We just met Thomas Colbeck okay. at an event we had on Friday. All right. The first president is in this picture. Does anybody know his name? Shanil Tabani. The first president? <laughs> Yeah, Chanel, we saw his yeah. name on a couple of papers. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've heard about these papers yeah, that, are, that are showing up. Are these have meeting like, minutes or what? Yeah, yeah. We have lots of document, documentation in a box <laughs> at my apartment. <laughs> um, and just to give you an idea of how important relationships are, uh, this is Megan Sanford here, and I'm here. Uh, we've known each other for a very long time. She just texted me last week asking for templates for continuity of operations plans. So we stay in touch. Um, people that I was here with at VCU, um, I was just in Anniston, Alabama at the Center for Domestic Preparedness this past week. I flew back into Richmond yesterday. I was there and it was this old army base and we stayed in old army barracks and so we had to share a bathroom with somebody. It turns out I was sharing mine with a guy that I took several classes with here and that I work with now. So, I mean, looking around you, thinking about your friends and the people that you hang out with and the people in this fraternity, you're going to be working together and it's important to maintain those and this is just a picture from uh, graduation. The Tom Cruise look like all the way on the right. Does anybody know who that is? It's another president of this fraternity. James, you don't know? James O'Flaherty. No. I don't remember that name. No? Okay. He was president. 
uh, and that's on from Martha, she came with me to New Orleans to, uh, to present that academic conference. So, switching gears to talk about my recommendations for you, uh, and these are just based on my personal experience, but they're things that really helped me, and hopefully they can help you as well. My first is to volunteer <coughs> with Medical Reserve Corps, CERT, EMS, and FIRE. And the reason for that is that I felt like I knew everything when I was here. I was, a, I was an academic rock star. Straight A's. I, I mean, I just studied hard, I aced every test. I didn't just pass them, I, mean, I was getting hundreds, 105s. I mean, it, it was just my life was doing well in school. And I thought I knew everything. And then I got to the Virginia Department of Emergency Management and realized how little I actually knew. And the reason was because I didn't focus on getting boots on the ground experience. So if you can do that, if you can volunteer for a local rescue squad, or a fire department, or a police department, I recommend that you do it. Because you're gonna be working with people who have 25, 30 years experience um, in those fields. And they're gonna look at you like they look, hope not, but like they looked at me, like this guy thinks he knows everything, he doesn't. You know? And that was a really, it was a really hard thing for me to learn, for me to realize that maybe I didn't spend my time here as wisely as I could have. Second is to listen. Um, practice listening. You can look up uh, listen.org, that's the International Listening Association. Anybody believe that there's an international listening? <laughs> I didn't, until I started uh, wondering what are some things that I can do to become a better listener. It's all tied to emotional intelligence and understanding how you receive criticism, but also how you receive any information from other people. I recommend that you look around, watch some TED Talks, uh, find some YouTube videos. There are a lot of great resources out there to help you become a better listener. And when you do that, you connect with somebody. And it's really hard to forget somebody that you truly connect with. Because when you're listening to somebody and they can tell that you're listening, their eyes light up, right? People become passionate and they're, they're excited to talk about the things that they're passionate about. So if you can bring that out in somebody, you, you've made a friend, you've built a relationship that will last the rest of your career. Um, also is building a lead, putting together, a, okay. It's putting together a leadership journal. This is something that came out of my master's program that I've been doing. It's just a little moleskin notebook, but I write down things that I see, uh, things that I hear, <clears throat> that I think might help me become a better leader, and I carry it around with me. And if I have a few minutes, if I'm waiting in line at the grocery store, or I'm riding the bus, I just pull it out and I review it. <clears throat> so just things like, um, who's this in Posner? Has anybody read the Leadership Challenge by Who's this in Posner? Okay, I recommend you read the Leadership Challenge by Who's this in Posner. Um, that's a great starting point for your leadership journey. And leadership can mean different things to different people, but that's a good launching pad. Um, so I also have some public speaking tips in here, and I don't know if anybody noticed me doing breathing exercises before I came up here, but I do get nervous in front of groups, and I was not <laughs> expecting the group to be this big. <laughs> and so I'm sitting there, and I'm doing some deep breathing, and people just keep coming in, and I'm doing more deep breathing, and people just keep coming in, and the room completely fills up. Um, but you know, that's just experience, right? I've been doing this for about seven years, so I've learned some things along the way that have helped me become better. I write them down in here, and then I review it when I have a chance. And the last is to participate in academic conferences. I went to um, New Orleans and presented there, but I also presented at the Wilder um, Academic Conference. Do you guys still have that? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's too bad. Mm -hmm. All right, I gave a great presentation <laughs> on constituency backlash um, and how that can negatively affect terrorist groups. It was really great, it was a great experience. Uh, I learned a lot, I learned about how to listen when people ask you a question because somebody asked me a question and I gave them an answer that they didn't ask for and I was a little embarrassed to learn that later. So I just listed a few skills here that are important in emergency management and I'm sure they're important in Homeland Security for you as well. So leadership, meeting facilitation. How many of you have been to a meeting and you're like, what am I doing here? This is just totally unorganized. All right, I run, I run the best meetings <laughs> at the state. <laughs> because I listen and I know how to bring people out and I know how to make an agenda and stick to it. And if you don't waste people's time, people are much more willing to work with you. Public speaking, that's really important. Um, you'll probably do a lot of that in your career. And lastly, be ready to extrovert. Right, just you've got to get out there, you've got to talk to people. It can be hard, it's hard for me. I identify as an introvert, but through mindful listening, through trying to become a better communicator, I have improved my skills at extrovert. 
And um, Abigail asked me to talk a little bit about some job opportunities in the field. And unfortunately, I don't know of any specifically right now. But just a few things that you can do. Uh, volunteer, like I mentioned before, Medical Reserve Corps, CERT. Um, take internships. You can call the Department of Health. You can call any agency and ask if they can take on an intern. They may not have the capacity to do it, but put yourself out there. Like, don't, don't get discouraged if they don't have the time, because if they do and they have the time and the capacity to bring you on, it's a really valuable experience. Lastly, go to the Virginia Jobs website at jobs.virginia.gov and check often. All right, that concludes my presentation, and I'm happy to take any questions and answers if we have time. <laughs> Do you have any questions? Yes. Okay, so I graduate next fall, and I've been looking at jobs that are very, like, scarce, I guess, for emergency management. Mm -hmm. How long did it take you to find a job, and how did you go about it for emergency management? It took a year, um, and I worked in, I worked in healthcare. I was a registrar in, a, in an emergency department, which is kind of related, so I, I found a field that was tangentially related. Um, and I just kept uh, looking, and the person who told me to apply was my roommate, another member of this fraternity, Rob Chicolo. He was working at the Department of Emergency Management, and he told me there was a job available, and I got it. Um, I didn't think I would. I thought I'd bomb the interview. I was really surprised when I got a call back, but it was that relationship with Robert that helped get, get my foot in the door. So, like, sorry, this goes off of that. I heard that even if you don't think you're qualified, apply it anyway and see if you get it. Is that, like, true? Mm -hmm. Yes, you can. And if you, you may not screen into the interview process. There's no harm in that. I'm working on hiring a new Medical Reserve Corps coordinator now. We have 23 applicants. There are five that I want to interview. Uh, the others, I'm glad that they applied, but they just weren't right for the job. And it's important to, to keep trying. Thank you. You're welcome. Kiana Hey. I just saw, oh, I want to ask about what the environment was of ELS when it first began what it was like when we were there. It was small. It was small. We were close. Um, the people in that picture, I don't keep in touch with all of them, but we were really close. Um, I don't know if you guys have, is, is this a monthly meeting or bi-monthly? Monthly. This is a monthly meeting. Monthly meeting? Okay. We weren't able to pull together enough members every month um, to have a meeting. The program itself, the HSEP program here was very new as well. Uh, we were close with our professors and I understand there's been a lot of turnover. Uh, probably, I, I didn't have anybody that you guys have now, unless anybody here at John Augenbaugh or Jason Levy. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, it, it was a really, really small but close knit group. Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Good question. Thank you. Where do you see yourself going in the next five to ten years? Wow. That's a really <laughs> interesting question. Um, I, I plan to stay in my position for another three years, and the reason for that is that we work on a five-year budget cycle. I've been here for about three years. So I mentioned that I'm happy to get up every morning and excited about what I do. It's because I do something new all the time. So I want to keep going along with that. Then after that, I want to work at the local level and be an emergency manager or, or a deputy or a planner, maybe for the city of Richmond. Any more? I, I hope. Yes, oh, so for me, when I started at VCU, Homeland Security Emergency Preparedness, preparedness seemed like a new concept, and I don't know if that's just because it, this is a newer major and it's not in many schools, but have you seen a transition from your time working with um, people who are now becoming more aware of Homeland Security, and have you seen like any specific transition, like people are using more of like the same diction and everything, anything like that? Absolutely. Um, ICS terminology carries across all fields. Um, when did you start here? Uh, 2014. 2014? Okay. All right. it, it is a new program. Homeland Security is a new concept. Um, <clears throat> but it's grown a lot. And I know Abigail can attest to this too. We attend a lot of regional meetings. We're all starting to speak the same language. And we're all looking at this program. I love it when I get an applicant from this program. I didn't get any this time. But um, I love it. We're making a name for ourselves. Uh, the people that graduated from this program, like James O'Flaherty, Andre Marcos, um, people are aware of where we came from, and they understand that this is a good program. So it's getting a lot of recognition. Okay. All right. Any other questions? I forgot to mention that I brought this too. I know I was holding. Like, I'm going to do a magic trick. <laughs> but uh, this is my red cord. This is what we had when I graduated in 2010 to signify Atlanta Sigma. 
So I just wanted to bring it and show it to you guys. I understand that you use um, something a little different now, but I'm very proud to have this. So thank you. Thank you.